and welcome to another episode of Remember When with Diona Doherty, a podcast where I, Diona Doherty, funnily enough, ask my guests to remember when something happened in pop culture history that had some sort of effect on them. Before we get into today's podcast, a wee bit of housekeeping. No, it's not really housekeeping. Housekeeping, that sounds like I'm going to tell people off. Just buy tickets to The Hindu. <laughs> That's basically what I'm trying to say. My new comedy play, The Hindu, is on sale now. You can buy tickets at all of your local theatres. We're going to the Grand Opera House, the Millennium Forum, uh, the Ardon and Enskillen, whatever the one is in Cookstown. Ar- mm. Bernavin. Got you, Cookstown. Um, where else is there? There's all, all the places. Marketplace, Arma, all those places. We'll be there in September and October. Um, and you can buy tickets now and it's going to be just the best night out you've ever had. If you're the sort of person that buys people presents for Easter, one, how much money do you have? <laughs> Two, you could buy them a great gift to go see the hen do at Halloween. Why not? Wait, why not wait six months to enjoy that gift? That's my favourite gift. It was my birthday yesterday and I would have loved to have gotten a gift that I could enjoy in six months' time rather than yesterday. Uh, also, you can join the Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash remember when where I do a solo podcast every Monday. And this week I talk all about my severely haunted child. Um, if anybody out there knows how to unhaunt a child, um, do let me know. I did discover it. I think it's just that she's sleeping in the mornings and becoming a lot more dead on. And... For that reason, she clearly has a poltergeist in her room. Uh, my guest today is... I'm very lucky to have her on because I know she has a very crazy, busy, busy schedule. Uh, it is the wonderful Kill cool FM breakfast host and, indeed, in-demand stylist, Rebecca McKinney. <laughs> Hello. Hiya. How are you? Do people ever introduce you by accident as Rebecca McGuire? <clears throat> Just because you're the the two Rebecca's in the media sort of thing, do you mean? not in person, but online, we always get tagged in each other's things by mistake. I mean, I take it as a massive compliment. I feel really sorry for her. She's raging. (laughs) She's raging, but I'm delighted. She started to take me for a former Miss Ireland. (laughs) (laughs) She started the hashtag, not Rebecca McKinney. Yeah, she has. (laughs) I know, she's like, no, do not want to look like her. I feel so bad it was your birthday yesterday and I didn't bring you a gift. That's okay, you should. Sorry. (laughs) Right, what's the address? Here, I'll send some flowers. Do you know what? I think is it Lady Gaga's birthday either today or on my birthday? I think we either share a birthday or her birthday is the day after. Either way, when it was my twenty first birthday, I dressed up as her in the meat dress. In the what? The meat dress. Oh, the meat dress. Yeah. No, because that would have been way more expensive and smelly. <laughs> than, <laughs> but what if you got? She did that. I did the. Do you know the music video where she's with Beyonce? Telephone and oh, yeah. the American flaggy yes. stuff. And we went to the box nightclub. The best. Place. It was my 21st. I feel like I spent my youth there. It was the best. The best. Because we're quite, are we quite similar in age? I feel like yeah, I think, a little bit younger than maybe, me. Maybe by a year or two, but I think we're similar. Yeah. Around about the same area. Yeah, if it makes you feel yeah, better. It makes me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the old hag these days. Did you, were you somebody who went to the VIP in the box? Oh my God, I was the embarrassing one that used to sit. Do you remember there was like a sports bar opposite yeah. the box? Yeah. And the queue would be the whole way down the Odyssey, like stretched right down past the pizza yeah. hut. And I would be like waiting in the sports bar until like... Someone would give the nod from the door, like let you us could go skip in, in. skip yeah. in past the queue. Did you? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know how. I don't know how we ended up being like one of the people that got into VIP in the box because we, it wasn't difficult. I'll but yes, I genuinely think it was just you just gave somebody a hug. Yeah, <laughs> like all right there, son. I gen- yeah, I, th- I genuinely <laughs> think it was a bit of a lingering hug. If you just yep. held on for an extra second, they were like, you can go up Here's to the VIP. Band. Yeah, it was the best though. That was like the like our youth. I think the yeah. youth of today are missing out to the fact that the box does not exist anymore. I don't think nightclubs are a thing now, are they? I mean, I know some. Are, did Pete still DJs? He's DJ in Twenty One Social. The odd say? time. Okay, he graces it with his presence. The <laughs> right. old time. Okay. <laughs> and then he usually doesn't let me know he's there because if I'm out the same time, then I'll appear. Yeah. And ask for J-Lo all night long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. can't stand that. Mr. DJ! Yes. <laughs> Excuse me! Can't play J-Lo But yet. then, even that's a bar as well, the people dancing. Yes. I mean, I could dance anywhere. It doesn't really bother me, but I think we need to bring back the old school nightclub. Do you remember before the box that was precious? No, because I was living in Derry then. Oh. I only came to when I was 18. Right. And they wouldn't let me in before. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, no. Yeah, like, you have to wait till you have ID. You can come down here. <laughs> 
Uh, so I didn't, I didn't do Precious. But was it the same setup? A thousand rooms? So a thousand little rooms, but I think it was definitely smaller. And you used to have to go in from, do you know, up the stairs when you're going to the cinema? Mm -hmm. There was like a padded door. Yes, a padded, do you remember yes, the padded that door? that was there for the box too. And I remember we were like, we thought we were the bee's knees and we got in there. It was mm -hmm. like, we're, we're so cool. And then the next step was trying to get into Ollie's because it was over 21. That's right. And now when I go to Ollie's, I feel like I am everyone's mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the thing, <laughs> I think, because I used to work in a visa. Did you? At the front door. Where was that? Where La Lea used to be. Oh my God, that's right. Which is now China White. Does that exist is anymore? Is it China White? I feel like that's gone too. Oh, they run through them, don't they? God, yes. So I, mean, I used your to work. kids will be going out before. My me. kids will be going nowhere, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be dancing. When are you doing? To the Ansco marching <laughs> something in my kitchen for years. Um, like, t like eight, I've got eight weeks, I think. Eight or nine weeks. Ten weeks if we're to believe science. Because, like, they, 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 they come out when they want, is the mad thing. Eight weeks and you will be mum of two. Mum of two, stepmom of... Two. I mean, and I've, I've got a bonus three as well. Oh, yeah. my gosh. There's so many. There's so you're, many. You're a nice stepmom. I would imagine you're not a wicked stepmom. Not Well, publicly, I try and be nice about them, but at home, I am. they don't get out of their rooms. They don't even get fed in my house. They have to do, do the laundry and the dishes and everything around the house. They, I, I fucking wish they left it a finger. They wouldn't even wipe their own arses. They're 16. <laughs> but it's funny because they, they, they're at the age now where they're in school and their friends have seen things that I've been in and seen things that their daddy has been in. Do you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. So they sort of, and I don't know if they sort of love it or hate it yet. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if they think it's a cool Are they or, embarrassed? I don't, they don't show it to us if they're embarrassed because that's so rude. It's so rude. <laughs> no, I would say you'd be like a cool mum and dad. Um, I've tried to explain to Pete, his daughter's getting to this sort of, she's 12. She's yeah. her first year. Yeah. There's only a few more years left before she's like, oh, dad. Even, hiding yeah. hiding from him in the school car park. Even the first year thing, like as soon as they go into secondary school, that's it. They're Game gone. Changer. You, they, they don't like you anymore. They're just like, stop, stop being around. So we did um, a couple of months ago at his daughter's school, we did, Pete was booked to do a colour run. You know where they go and yeah. throw all the colour yeah. in the air. All the and chalk. The kids, yeah, all the chalk and the kids run around the playground. So he was booked to DJ and host mm -hmm. it. So he said to me, would you come with me? Because I'm too embarrassed. I'm going to embarrass my daughter. So uh -huh. I need you there as a buffer because they'll think it's fine if you're there. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to make this Is any that more incredible. <laughs> it probably was meant to be, but I don't think it was. So we went and had like an absolute ball. But I was like the buffer between yeah. embarrassing his teenage daughter. I didn't really think that I was that kind of person, but clearly... Did I'm she, available if anyone wants to did she talk? school occasions. <laughs> That's, that is not the message you want to be putting out there. I'm available if you want to bring me to your kids' yeah. school. What? Um, was she embarrassed when he was there? No, she was... I think initially she's a wee bit awkward and then she kind of... Mm -hmm. When she saw everyone else was loving it and wanting photos and yeah. stuff, then she was like... Can I come up on the stage? And she oh loved God. it. She loved it. So you, how long have you been at Kill FM? So eight years we've been Shut on up. the breakfast show. Yeah, yeah. And that was my first. Yeah. <laughs> first for That's Rory and end. Oh yeah, absolutely. Totally out of my depth. Yeah. Thrown straight in. Yeah. And um, to be fair, I was well looked after with Pete and Paolo. Like they taught me everything. Mm -hmm. But I was wetting myself. I. I was very stressed when that first happened. Because that's like, what? That's the... That's the end goal for many yeah. broadcasters is to get to the breakfast show and get that position. So for that to be like your first radio show is nuts. I know. I did initially feel like a complete fraud. And then mm. after eight years, I think I'm finally beginning to accept the fact that I don't have imposter syndrome. It's Peyton Callum's actually, the fraud. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. Um, yeah, I run the show. And yeah. I, I really don't. Um, but yeah, I definitely felt that imposter syndrome for a long time. And mm. I think finally now, eight years in, I'm like, no, I know what I'm doing. I'm all right. Isn't that funny? But do you think that's as a woman? Because I still feel like that in comedy. He, I didn't hear, no, like, it's like a boring conversation. You'd be like, oh, woman in comedy. But here, there's not that many. So you yeah. still constantly feel like the imposter or like you're trying to like prove yourself. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? And there are many more. Probably wasn't as many women in radio when you were doing it, but there are plenty more now loads now which is great to see yeah. and it's so important it's great to see more women coming in mm. but in the beginning it was such a male dominated space yeah. and because I was coming from a world that wasn't radio at all yeah 
I did feel like I had a lot to learn. And I think notoriously in radio, they bring girls in to be like the giggly girl in the corner yes. that just teehees and laughs at the men's hilarious hate jokes that. and makes them look good. And I hate that. Yeah. So I think like anyone who listens to the show will know like I That's very much setup. stand my own. Yeah. Um, you have to. And yeah. I think that kind of took a while to get over that stereotype, probably in my own head more than yeah. anything else. And like you feel you feel bad because you're trying to not be that person. So you're like, I'm not going to laugh at any of your funny <laughs> shit. <laughs> if it makes me look like the giggly girl, I'm going to make you feel like shit about your crap jokes. But they do make me laugh. Yeah, That's the thing. Yeah. Like, we have a great time. But what's the dynamic setup? Because obviously listening to the show, it very much feels like mum, dad and the <laughs> teenager Palo, doesn't it? That's how it feels. <laughs> Is that really how it That's comes across? That's how I think. It feels like... Palo, and then you'd be like, oh, Palo. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's like, very much like siblings. That's kind of the way that okay. we would see it. It's like there, and I have a brother of my own who behaves more like an older brother probably to me, but with Pete and Palo, it's very much like Pete's the older brother, Palo's the like annoying younger brother. And we all, we have that family kind of relationship yeah. where you could have a row with them mm -hmm. and then two seconds later be fine. Yeah. And we're all very honest and open and like what you hear is the way it is. And uh, I mean, if you could, if you could broadcast the off air stuff, it would be much funnier. Mm -hmm. But obviously we want to keep but our jobs. That's the thing. Yeah, exactly. You can't, you have to, you have to, so do you feel like, because obviously like your social media presence and your your on-air persona and stuff yeah. as well. I mean, you're sort of forced to stay in a clean-cut PC world, really, yep. to exist in that universe. Yes. Do you ever just want to go, fuck everybody <laughs> on the radio? You throw a yeah. bunch of ball bags. Of course. You look shit in that dress. <laughs> Stop bringing in, child. You're not getting fucking tickets to the cinema. Fuck off. Do you ever just want to? <laughs> we are vertigo. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Sorry, we are vertigo. inflatable park pass and no matter what you say, even if it's awful, you'll get a ticket. See, do you not want to say to somebody sometime, your joke is shit or like, whatever you have to tell me is shit. Go away, 12 year old. You're not I mean, going to be our vertigo. Like, don't get me wrong. Sometimes it's not as funny as she'd like to be, but Paolo went through a phase of being quite honest and yeah, then yeah, the yeah. mummy brigade got him yeah. and I think he was scared yeah. to ever walk past any kind of playground or school gate because <laughs> the mummies were after Palo so we yeah, had to he tone was, it down. He was barred from the playgrounds for a very yeah, different yeah, reason. Yes, ex oh exactly yeah. but I think that like, regardless we, we're normal people yeah. we like kind of pushing the line as much as we can mm -hmm. but at the end of the day we want to keep our jobs Yeah, and I think everyone's out to be offended these days so as you know there's a very fine line at which we can yeah. walk but I think we do it quite well sometimes the odd thing slips out so is the me. is the off air off social media Rebecca much different no not really not okay. really like I I think as the years have gone on I've been become more comfortable being myself completely on air like yeah. in the early days if the boys would have spoken about like boyfriends or like anything embarrassing yeah I would have been so annoyed whereas now anything in your life if they yeah. were talking okay. yeah, yeah 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 so um like <laughs> there was now if this had happened years ago it would have complete I would have been so upset but there was one time when Paolo called out my moustache <laughs> Which, I mean, we all have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, I, well, not all of us. I but plucked I, my chin I this do. morning, Rebecca. See, you have Come to, on. you have my, to. Do you know, I'm not even lying, my favourite thing to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my a, God. I have a couple I'm of hairs here and I cannot wait to the grow back. So I, I have to get, out. see if you use this as a clip for this podcast, I <laughs> will kill you. Jesus, but I, I, have to, I have to get my friends sometimes because <laughs> I'm too scared to do it myself. Just the odd hair. But anyway, if that had been you brought... You don't pluck at your moustache, do you? Do not? No. If there's one or two, can you not? I would trim plucking would make my eyes what the oh my gosh no I just got her to pluck it out just one hair maybe I've just got too much growth to <laughs> there all day <laughs> but whenever I started on the show I was I think I was, I was so self conscious I was worried about being in the public eye I wasn't yeah. used to that kind of criticism that I was getting in the beginning yeah Um, and I just wasn't used to that whole world so I was so self conscious about things and so embarrassed and worried about how it would come across mm -hmm. whereas now eight years in I'm in my 30s I know who I am you know now, who you are. and I have no problem talking about cellulite and yeah. like all of those kind of things yeah. on air now, and we can joke about it, and it doesn't it doesn't make me feel self conscious anymore yeah. because it's important to be real. I agree. So my off air persona is is I am who I am on air. I'm the same person as I am yeah. off air. 
you just might get a few experiences. Just make her a bit more off air. Yeah, Pretty of course. Yeah, yeah, that's the way it works. But that's the thing. Like, um, even when I like when I was in my twenties, like yeah, you, you're at such a vulnerable time. And I applaud all these. Like you see all these people oh. now working in media here in their twenties, and you're so sure of themselves and know exactly who they are. And you're like, I wish I had that confidence at your age yeah. to not feel bad about shit that people were saying online. Whereas I, get you, I mean, people say stuff about me online. Nobody can say anything about me online that I haven't thought already exactly. about myself. And I try and own those things yeah. before someone else says it. I'll try and laugh about it myself before yeah. someone else jumps in. And in the beginning, because cool FM social media is an absolute minefield like it's massive particularly their Facebook and I used to read all the comments under our videos and I used to go back and look through all the stuff that people have been saying whereas now I don't go anywhere near it I make a rule to not look because I don't care anymore whereas in the beginning every little comment hurt me personally I find it so hard to deal with um, and but I sometimes like we just talked about before we start recording about like how why I would always have had people Talk about my massive forehead. Me too. And I, even though my forehead's double the size of yours. It's not though. Mine actually curves back. It's, I'm fine with it. I was not. doing a gig the other night in Balamita and Ian Thompson, right, who's another comedian who is completely bold and Pete Giffen, another comedian who is completely <laughs> bold, well, let's the three of us take a photograph together. Do you want to tilt your head back and do the bold thing? And I was like, what? <laughs> Do the bald thing. Just like my hair was in a bobble, and if I tilt it back, it looks like I've no. I look completely bald. That is bald. mean and not true. But actually, it's, it's fine because it is true, it's and funny. I'm like I'm totally fine with that. But sometimes I would have went searching for nasty comments because I I would find them funny. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it does not, none of them offend me. Yeah. You can't say anything about how I look or my work or even about my children, my husband, my family. I don't give a shit if you slag my ma. I don't <laughs> care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. See, I wish I had that confidence. There's still, like, I would be naturally a really quite a sensitive, sensitive. person. Yeah. So I've had to develop like elephant eyed thick skin yeah. to get to this. But there's still some things that will niggle me, but nowhere near the yeah. way it would have before. The and forehead suppose, thing, which we talked about yeah. earlier there was a comment this this pushed me over the edge I think it was my first year at Cool, and I read a comment under a video on Cool's Facebook page to say that my forehead was the size it was like the runway at the international airport you could land all of the planes on the size of my forehead <laughs> I'm so hurt and now I think it's hilarious also the international airport's tiny I agree. Uh huh. If it was Heathrow, it'd be a different story. If it was that one of Frankfurt, which was my fucking 15 terminals, I'd have been raging then. But yeah. I take Belfast International as a compliment. I mean, the city would have been better. But yeah, it's your fine. tiny forehead. It's fine. Now I can own it and it's yeah. not a problem. But I think learning to laugh at yourself is so important, but it comes with the comfort of age. Yeah. And now I'm in my like late 30s and it's so funny because Sean's 39 care. and still says he's mid 30s like, oh I, I turned no. 34 yesterday and he's like oh we're both in our mid 30s and I'm like that isn't true because in like a kick in the hole away you're 40 <laughs> he's, like, he's definitely we still have a little bit to go yeah he's like we we're, do. we're all in our mid 30s <laughs> here <Made a> bit. <laughs> no no Pete does that all the time there's seven years between us yeah. I'm like hon no she yeah there's a whole school between us yeah ex- yeah you know? a whole school a whole school that's it me and Sean too there was a hundred miles and a whole school a <laughs> hundred miles and a whole school and you, you managed to meet up and look having gorgeous babies that together. is the name of like a romance <clears throat> novel a hundred miles and a whole school that could be if this doesn't work out for you hey go get into novels so sorry it's gonna work out for you. <laughs> it is working out <laughs> fucking fit your tents <laughs> I had Pamela Valentine on the podcast right in the early days I love Pamela <clears throat> she's brilliant and but she had spoken about do you know how, like, because obviously she's, uh, she represents UTV. Largely, yeah. she's been with UTV for so long, mm-hmm. the same way you, you represent Cool FM yeah. as well, so you have to sort of be careful. Um, and she had always spoken about when she goes out on a night out, and we all know Pammy loves her nights out. Yes. And when she would get, like, loosey-goosey and have, like, a couple of glasses of wine and an old bag of these, I know what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna kill you. She's gonna kill me. She's on a couple of glasses of wine. She feels like she can't really let go. Yes. You know, and dig into the bag of these. <laughs> she feels like because she she knows there's so many eyes on her. Yeah. And that like she's like because she's such a stalwart of UTV. That's like oh I'm I represent the the you know this yeah institution. And so she always feels that pressure. Do you feel that when you're on a night out because you'd be so recognisable now and because you represent something that's Family orientated? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, I think. Like, you can't be getting blocked at soft play. I, absolutely not. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Why just, would you be there? You don't have kids. <laughs> yeah. me sound weird. <clears throat> no, look, I think to be even compared to Pammy's level of, like, recognize. That's not a word. Recognition. Recognition. That's 
my mother didn't I mean, watch this she'll be ashamed that I got <laughs> that wrong um, to Pammy's level of recognition just I'm I'm not on her level at all but yeah like when I'm out and about I'm, all. I'm aware I know thanks for that you're making me sound better <laughs> than I am yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Z- let's get back to the Z listers <laughs> let's be real but no I, I'm always aware of yeah. course I'm aware because I just want to make sure that I would never do I would never do or say anything anyway but you know when you're out and about you need to be able to enjoy yourself but at the same time I'm just very conscious yeah. of my job and I respect who I work for and I want to always make sure I'm like ticking those boxes but equally you have to live your life I know. and you have to have a good time too I know. so bag of A's is not really my thing yeah. a few porn star martinis 100% right. I like to have a good night out I love a good time but definitely when I'm away somewhere I can fully let my hair down yeah 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 yeah, yeah. when it's done is um Am I right? Did I hear or read that you did you grow up in a boarding school? Did you oh, live yeah, in a boarding yeah. school? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Did you? Odd. You didn't board. No, you it was an all boys school. And oh, then there was me. <laughs> You'd be like the wee English fella. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty much what it was like. Would you like me to explain? Because yeah. it sounds a bit odd. So, <laughs> Rebecca's a glad man. So I oh no, I was the opposite because I was so embarrassed. I just I don't know. I just was so shy. I was, you would have thought that I would have been running right around the place, but I really wasn't. So. I my dad has taught in Campbell College for like over 40 years he's been there his whole teaching career and when my mum and dad got married they moved into like a house in the school grounds and have lived there ever since still do so um dad are there was, other houses on the yeah sp- oh, yeah, okay. yeah yeah so dad was head of the boarding department for most of like my childhood so we lived in our family home was like a flat in the actual school building so there was like us in like an apartment thing and then a door between us and the boarding department and the whole school. So we used to eat dinners with the boarders, like Sunday lunches, like breakfast in the dining hall of the school. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really weird. So it's, it was me and my brother, my younger brother, um, and then my mum and dad. And it was always like, mum and dad just always had the responsibility of 60 boarders. And Mm. when you were younger, it was the coolest thing ever because we like, learned to swim in the pool and we used to like ride our bikes around the grounds we total free reign of the place it was amazing like it's like growing up in a in like a playground it was yeah. the coolest thing ever and then when you got to teenage stage I went to the girls school down the road mm. I went to Strathern and I was wildly self-conscious and I used to have to walk home through the grounds of Campbell in your all uniform. the boys in my hideous school uniform and I was so embarrassed you know the horrible teenage yeah. spotty greasy fringe stage where yeah. I just felt Rebecca, like, I felt I like the ugly it. duckling I skipped it but you've always been no, beautiful no I didn't know I definitely so didn't lucky. skip it don't worry no, one's, no one gets you're to skip so it you're so lucky you've been glowing ever since but <laughs> I definitely definitely wasn't and it used to my dad was also in charge of rugby so it was a big rugby school so then none of the boys ever would were interested in me because they, they were too scared afraid of my dad yeah, yeah. yeah it was only one time only one time I got caught out only one time what do you mean caught out? Only one time because I would never have been allowed like in the you boys' rooms the boys. or like in any of the any of the corridors anywhere. It was only one time I ever got caught out, and the look from my father was enough. Would you know to why? Make me never speak to a boy again because they say <laughs> the first time you got caught is not the first time you did it, Rebecca. <laughs> In my case, it was. I'm so sad. You're so shit I'm at so, it. I'm so bad at it. Exactly. So, Do you yes. know who that boy is now? Yes, we're not talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> it was from Balamina, that's all I'll say. Oh my God. Pardon me, guy. Um, that's, cr- <laughs> that's a comedian. Um, that's, so that is such a brilliant, but so different. I don't oh, know so anyone weird. Had Oh, I know. Him. It's uh, my, my parents still live there. So my dad is still teaching. They're still there. My brother went to school probably more off. Well, I mean, he just had to roll out of bed and he was in school. So like, oh, so nice he went and, there. He went there. Nice in that sense, but not so nice in the fact that your dad has yeah. to teach it. But, um, so when you, what did you do for primary school? So I went to the girls' school down the road. Right. Where, where my mom now teaches. All very incestuous. Yeah. Yeah. We, we don't really move farther than the Balmont Road. Yeah, there's like fast. a half a mile radius that you're staying yeah, within. Yeah, yeah, we're quite a quite a, an inclusive family. And were there other families living there? Yeah, there still are. So there's there's other Is families. Is still a boarding school? Yeah, mm-hmm. Oh my yeah, gosh. oh my God, it's much bigger now than it was even back in the day. But, I mean, if my dad ever was able to write a book, there's some stories that it could tell. But it was we used to go on rugby tours. So dad would have been in charge of the rugby and we would have gone with the school. Like, we went to New Zealand with the rugby team and um, that was like a but month But was it just you and loads of boys? Yes. 
<laughs> if I was a different type of girl, it would have been the dream. But I yeah, was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You like to look at me, embarrassing little gremlin, and I was just so self conscious. <laughs> and were you trying to be like one of the boys, or were no. you? Oh, okay. no, 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 no. And because of dad, like it was very. Anyone who knows my dad, know he's very. Very sensible, very by the book. You would right. not want to get on the wrong side of dad. And I was very, very well behaved. Yeah. I was an angel child. Because it seems... It's all changed now, but... Yeah, you're a demon. <laughs> <laughs> Wild. You were being up for the Wild. Morning. <laughs> but it's because like... Because obviously you're like so heavily involved in fashion and you're yeah. quite girly. And yeah, really girly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just seems so mad. That you, maybe it was a, maybe that was you rebelling. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. But I was, yeah, I was always like, my brother would be out like like playing rugby with the borders and I just because it was no neighbours or anyone else so I'd just be like playing with my dolls under the trees yeah. and just like so embarrassed but then when I went to secondary school some of the girls would be like oh yeah we'll come to your house we'll come to your house you know because all the, all the boys are there boys everywhere mm-hmm. oh my god yes yeah. that's the dream sleepover for a teenage girl yeah. isn't it yeah. which is why it you're not going to get knocked up good and young <laughs> <laughs> it was never allowed to happen well, it's never allowed to happen, Rebecca. There was one time, there was one time um, I lost this... Uh, this Your virginity? No, stop! <laughs> <laughs> no! We used to have pets in school and there was a school bunny rabbit that used to go home to, with every, each family. Did you ever have that in school? No. School pet. No, we wouldn't be allowed to do this now. But no. Back in the olden days. I don't even think they gave us a boiled egg. Do you know what thing? I think? We had, a bu- we had a pet bunny rabbit and he used to take turns to take it home. And there was one week, it was my turn. So I took it back and of course, we took the bunny rabbit for a walk. My brother and I in the in the school corridors. And right. didn't I lose the bunny rabbit? <gasps> So we lost the school bunny rabbit. Oh my God, like totally lost it? Well, we find it under one of the border's beds. Oh no. Did they eating, capture eating it? Eating a sock. Oh, oh no. So, so it didn't get, it wasn't a kidnapped rabbit. No, it no. It went searching for a fun sock. It had, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, I, I don't even want to think about that anymore, but we got the bunny rabbit back and it was yeah. not allowed out of the house. Oh my God. From them. What sort of posh school did you go to? Were hand like rabbits? I know. I went to yeah. I went to like Strather and Prep. So mm. I mean, yeah. I don't think enough. they would trust kids with rabbits now. <laughs> like send them home. No, <laughs> absolutely not. I'm surprised they even trusted me with that one. That's such a different upbringing. Like I'm sure you don't know anyone else who. L- no, who, but were you so were you friends with the other families? So the, yeah, so the, but there were no other like young kids. There were no other young kids there. So it was kind of just us and like my brother and, and I were really, really close. Yeah. yeah. So, but it was amazing. It was like, it was like Harry Potter. It was like growing up yes. somewhere like that. And because mum and dad are still I was going to say it was like Westboro Baptist Church, but it is more like <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> that feels more suitable. It's like Harry Potter because it's such an amazing place. And like mum and dad are still there now. And I think whenever, whenever they do retire and they have to move, it'll be so strange because it'll yeah. always feel like part of home. Yeah. Yeah, us. like you said, like you're part of the history and yeah, those grounds. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So yeah, so that's my weird up. <coughs> but then, so you had, I know you went on to study law, mm-hmm. which is something I wanted to do whenever yeah. I was growing up. I always wanted to study law, but genuinely, yeah. which is so funny because I feel like you'd be the ideal candidate for this. I thought it would be like Legally Blonde. I would have loved that. I was like, I'll be in pencil skirts and yeah. blazers, and I will rock the <laughs> shit out of those. No, but like, Your I'd Honor, not, like yeah. I thought I would. It would be like there, there would be like a stage. You know me what I mean? Too. Me too. And then it wasn't like that, which is why I'm not a practicing lawyer. No. Did you, you got knee deep in it and we're like, this is, yeah. this is not for me. Yeah, it just, like, I, I enjoyed why my... Why there so many rules? <laughs> so many <laughs> laws. So many books to read. No, look, I enjoyed it and I and I got my degree and I'm super proud yeah. of it. And my best friend who did law with me, uh, who went, we went all through school together, she's like a kick-ass lawyer now okay. and in the pencil skirts and nailing life. Yes. There's sometimes I think, oh, do you think people know that I have a brain? Yes, <laughs> they do. Actually, after this, they will. Um, or maybe not. Maybe this is going to ruin it all. But no, look, I think at school, I was, maths was a problem. I was not good at maths. I didn't like science. I was English, history, art, all of those. Which lent all of that. Law. Yeah, well, it was either you in my school, it was like, well, if you're good at science, be a doctor. If you're good at English, Same. be a teacher or a lawyer mm-hmm. or kind of a journalist. Like, I, I always kind of thought about a journalist as well, but law seemed like the easiest fit. So, yeah. managed to get the grades to get in, went to Queen's, loved it. And then when I graduated, um, we had to then do the bar exam mm-hmm. to get further t- into further training we were probably spending too much time in actual bars yeah. so I got on the waiting list for that I didn't get in straight away and like I was ac- academics at school was my thing and it was probably the first thing I've ever failed and it was a good lesson for me because I thought my life was over I was like what am I gonna oh, do really? 
yeah, like I really thought this is the end of the way for me. And which sounds so dramatic, but you know at that yeah. age, yeah. when you have this yeah. goal in your I head. I cried in this moment if I stood as dressed as Lady Gaga on my 21st birthday <laughs> thinking, what have I achieved? I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I was like drowning my sorrows in the box after mm-hmm. that. But then I just, I had to decide another path. So I went and did, while I was waiting to do the bar exam again, I went and did a master's in communication, advertising, PR. Okay. Fell in love with that. Never did the bar exam again and went, then went into media marketing and then here yeah. we are. Isn't it funny how things take a turn I like know. that? I know. Yeah. But everything that's happened to me career-wise has been right place, right time, luck, opening doors. I'd like to say it's because, you know, I work really hard and all of that. But actually, when I stand back and look at it, I've just been, I've been lucky. No, well, I don't think that's, I think it's a combi- it can be a combination of things. Yeah. I think it's also having, like, keeping your eye open for the right thing as well and being, yeah. like, vigilant. Because even, like, I never thought I would do stand-up. I never thought that's something I would ever end You're up so doing. Brave. I don't know how you do it. It's 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 it terrifying. Yeah, me. it's terrifying. It is. I think it used to be more terrifying for me before I had my daughter. And I was only yeah. doing it a short period of time before I had her anyway. And I literally would be like, before going on stage, going, am I going to shit or vomit? Because like, I need to, my body needs to like do something. evacuate something. <laughs> I'm not well. And then I remember every time going, why can't I be, why can't I just have like a nice, non-scary job like a receptionist, I'd, I'd kill it being a receptionist. I'd love to do that. I'd love <laughs> to greet people and just like fill in their form. Like, I was like, why am I not doing that? And then afterwards, I'd be like, no, I may, I sh- this is what I'm supposed to be doing. After I had my daughter was when I started to like, look, I had no nerves for anything anymore. Really? Nothing. So motherhood lost the fear for you? Yeah, because I gained fear of everything else. <laughs> there was no room for like pre-gig worried anxiety. Worried yourself. I'm worried about everything else. So yeah. like, there was just no room left in my brain to be nervous about a gig. And it also gave me perspective like, oh, why is up? See this gig in Ballymena, do 100 people? In the grand yeah. scheme of things, yeah. even if I do really shit tonight, which I did last week in Ballymena, um, nobody can, everyone will go home and consume a million more videos online before they go to bed and forget they even seen me tonight do you know what I mean yeah no I totally get it but I think you're probably being hard on yourself I am I I've killed you before. Before. <laughs> no, I of course you did no, but you're always brilliant and you're definitely meant to be doing this like I have no idea how you do it and have the confidence like it's my worst nightmare to do stand up but you do lots of public speaking yeah I'm fine with that I'm fine with that because I know where I'm going and yeah. I'm not trying to be funny and yeah. I'm not an overly funny person so I'm but fine I think with it. that's the place if you threw in one wee joke it would kill oh god I don't know would kill I don't know. I don't. I don't have your skills. Pete likes to do that. Pete likes to do like. He likes he, to try. He just <laughs> burn. I love him. It's we we have this joke all the time. <laughs> I'm funnier, right? What is your? So you obviously get up probably much earlier than I even do. Um, yeah. What's your like? What do? You, what's your mornings look like? So it is the alarm goes off a quarter to five, mm-hmm. and then I snooze it. Totally. He used to get up quarter to five in the bottom full face and make up, do my hair, get a nice outfit on, head in. Now the alarm goes off quarter to five. I snooze it until five o'clock. Then I snooze it again until as late as I can possibly get away with, have a shower, throw on some form of gym gear, yeah. stick my hair in a bun and go. Yeah. And then I get into work and they're, they're so used to me looking like a troll. They're yeah. like, oh, and then I do my makeup in the dark in the studio and emerge where my face and my neck are two totally different colours. Oh, yeah. Post 10. So don't look too close. It's because I assume that most days you go and do other things after work. Yeah. Work, other yeah. work. And that's a misconception. People think that your working you work days done at 10. And you're no. done. Like the odd day it's like that and that is a treat. Yeah. But most days you're having to hustle. Yeah. Um, And that is, I love that. And it, the variety is amazing and it's great. No yeah. two days are the same. But that's when I can fit in my fashion stuff and it's great when I can get out with Pete and Paolo and do stuff together. And yeah, it's, yeah things like this. It's, it's really good fun. But you have to juggle your schedule. Mm. And that's the thing for me. I think I find it hard because you're self-employed. It's hard to say no to things because you think oh my gosh what if there's nothing next month no I know you know you have to kind of get the balance right and I think probably eight years in we learn all the time and I've definitely made loads of mistakes with saying yes to things saying no to stuff and kind of I kind of know my balance now which is good do you do you have like jobs you've done you're like I wish I didn't do that I think it's all learning and like for me you're looking for a scandalous story and I don't actually have one. I know you're a game dealer. Are there any but, are there any sections of like the world? <clears throat> like companies, <laughs> you don't need name companies, but like sections of like the industry that you would not work with? Um, like gambling or you Yeah, know. I mean like there's things I think this whole world works if you're authentic. I think if you try and do things just where it's very clear you're just doing it to make money all the time and you're constantly doing ads and you're you're doing things that don't fit with your personality or you're sort of, 
yeah. your brand, yeah. then I just don't think that resonates with people. So I like to try and be as authentic as I possibly can be. Uh-huh. Um, but are there like companies that have approached you and you went, I can't. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. Like, I mean, yeah, things that I'm not interested in or I wouldn't naturally do yeah. myself. I try and like vaping or something. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, it's vaping. just yeah. not me. It's just yeah. not me. And that's and then there are things that will suit other people better, like particularly with the boys. Like, yeah, we're super similar, but we're very different. Yeah, so there are things that will suit them better and suit things that will suit me better. But yeah, there's certainly there are definitely people that I've worked with before who maybe. I've like changed since then or I've learned yeah. maybe how to be a bit more respectful of my own worth mm-hmm. and I maybe wouldn't go back there yeah um brand wise and also just learning where you fit in that whole social media world and how you want to put yourself across mm-hmm. and I think probably I have more confidence now to say actually I know that's what you're looking for from this job but for me that's actually not what yeah, I'm it would comfortable be putting out there yeah. so because like I remember like in the early days of of like acting and being in sketch groups and stuff and you're always trying to promote the shows that you're in to get yeah. bums on seats and pay your wages so you would do like any interviews you could to try like promote the job or promote the show or whatever yeah. it is and now I'm like really careful about what like what like newspaper articles I'll do or like radio yeah. interviews I'm really careful about them because like there is one that has approached me a few times and it's only just to like they do like they do like a weekly thing but I find it so toxic their questions are all about what do you eat where do you work out and yeah. what's your what do you have as a treat at the weekend and how many units of alcohol a week do you drink and I was like why does anyone need to know this? I'm promoting a show in the Alp House that's about comedy why does somebody need to know what I have for my breakfast yeah no you're right I'm not a athlete I'm yeah. not a nutritionalist and I got back a few times and went I find this 90s toxic heroin <laughs> chic <laughs> Kate Moss shit yeah. this is the stuff I'd have read in magazines when I was 13 or 14 and be triggered and affected and by. be triggered yeah. massively and yeah. then spend 10 years trying to be skinnier and that's not what I would ever want to I never want my daughter to read an article about what somebody's eating and try and emulate it do you yeah, know what I mean no totally and it's great that you're strong enough to be able to go back and say that because for you it doesn't work for yeah. other people it's fine well I think and it's I think fine if you come thing. from a background where it's like impo- you have science based information yeah. to spread but if it's just like look at me I'm skinny and I only eat granola it's like well I don't think that's healthy because if somebody else only eat granola they might faint <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just Do you know what I mean? Little that's spoon science. of granola for breakfast before yeah. I came here. That's it. Uh, but I agree, and I think it's it's having the confidence to know yeah. where your own boundaries are, mm-hmm. and other people's boundaries are different, and that's okay. Yeah, but there is a price of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Just to of backtrack course. on all that. Of course there is. No, like I get that. Like we all have to work and it's great that there's enough work out there for everybody. I think that's really important. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you learn over the years things you want to get involved in again and things you don't. What do you what do you see your life looking like in 10 years time? Oh gosh, I don't know. I think I probably thought my life would look very different now. We all to do. be honest. We all I think do. we all did. Like, I don't I think definitely... I live in Craig Avenue, Rebecca. Oh God, how are you I love it. That? <laughs> don't look at the face. That's so rude. I'm joking, I'm joking. Do you know any time? <laughs> So I'm going to go to me, do you still live in Derry? And I'm like, no, I haven't lived in Derry in 15 years. Where do you live, Craig Avon? Why? Like, but that's the response. <laughs> Why? If someone said to me, where do you live? And I was like, uh, Hollywood, like where we are now. They would go, all right, very good. But when I say Craig Avon, they go, why? I'm only joking. <laughs> that's the, I'm that's only always the response. I'm like, listen, I'm married into it, okay, I had no choice. Yes, yeah, see, that's it. Not yeah. your call. <laughs> but that's the thing, like, you don't, I never thought I'd be like in, you know, living in Greg Avon or like even living here like when I was like a teenager I was like I'm gonna get spotted and be like zapped off to LA and that's where I'll be <laughs> that living that can still happen and uh, listen I don't want it to happen now it's funny how you change isn't it yeah I definitely thought at some stages I maybe would have tried to pursue TV and maybe tried London and given that a go yeah and I think now like I'm 36 now and I think I definitely um I want to be settled here I want to be close to my parents um, I my, agree. my brother I think here's a great place to it's live it's such a good place yeah. to live and I love it here and I think like I'm very close to my family I have an amazing group of friends and I obviously I'm very lucky to be in the job and as long as they want to have us yeah hopefully a little bit longer <laughs> we'll still keep doing that show because we love it but for me personally I thought you know I would have loved to have been a mum by now I would have loved to be married but it just hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Um, and if that is in my future, then great. That'll be amazing. But I think I'm just trying to settle into the fact that if that isn't meant for me, yeah. then I'm okay on my own yeah. and I'll always be okay. And I think that's it's, that's taken a long time to get to that point. It's such a 
minefield, I think, as a woman in your 30s because yeah. the world tells you you're <clears throat> supposed to have children by now. Mm-hmm. Biological clock and all that, which yeah. is so damaging because so damaging. You're, we're still babies yeah. ourselves. I know. Look we're still so young we have listen I can't get anything done to my face whilst I'm pregnant so I don't look like a baby right now <laughs> I still have teenage spots okay do you yes you don't. oh my god looks oh no, no 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 I do trust me trust me I am the acne queen I also am getting wrinkles so I'm getting both the unfair sides of the aging process yeah. teenage spots and older skin but we you're move. so conf- your face we is move. so confused my face is confused yeah. um, it's like, it's like such this like, like oh you're supposed to buy this by this age and this by this age and men just don't get that I know they don't they don't get it and it's very unfair but I think what is interesting to me now as I've sort of grown up over the last eight years in this media world with people having a minor interest in my life through the show is that the conversations and the messages people send me have shifted in terms of their focus so now Mm. I get a lot of messages from people who think they're maybe saying a kind thing I don't know why they would think this would be good but if I'm ever photographed or like post about my friend's children or I'm ever at friend's engagements or weddings or anything like that I always get the kids one particularly that I find quite toxic oh poor you oh fuck off it'll happen to you soon oh you'll meet the right one soon that's the worst oh, maybe you know in the next few years you might become a mum and and I, I know people are maybe trying to come at it from a kind place but I just I'm like this is this is not helpful and it's none of your business no you have no idea what's going on yeah. with a woman's personal life no. or maybe I can't have children or exactly. maybe there are things going on there you know and that I don't know that yet, but yeah. maybe I don't want to be a mum. Exactly. I do, and if it happens, that would be lovely. But I just think exactly. you're right. At our age, there is a judgment that society puts on women and a pressure that to, to be a parent I hope and will to start have a change. To change. Yeah, and yeah, also, exactly. Nobody would say that to a 36 year old man. Never. They'd be never like, he's, in a million years. He's he's not even old enough to look after himself. Ex- that's exactly. what people would say. Exactly. Like, like, he just hasn't settled yet. Yeah. And they'd say that to a man in their 40s. Whereas if you're single in your 30s as a woman, she can't hold down a man. Like, isn't that? Or mm-hmm. like, oh, she's on oh, my damaged goods or there's something yeah, yeah, going something, on there. Something Why not right there. Maybe something she's not a fucking right there. Maybe yeah, every exactly. fella has been a ball bag so far. <laughs> like, I, oh my God, it's the worst. It drives me Because I even yeah. remember, like, we spent years <clears throat> trying to have a baby. Like, it was a long and difficult process for us yeah. to get pregnant at all, both times. And, you know, the amount of, like, stuff that people would say to me because I had stepsons. I've actually never said this in the podcast before, but because I had stepsons, okay. so many people be to me... Cause knowing that we were going through IVF, yeah. people would be like, but if it doesn't happen, it's fine because you've you got your stepsons. And I'd be like, that is so rude. It's so insensitive. That's, well. that's, that yeah. I wanted to, do, I wanted to be a mum on yeah. my own accord. Yeah. And I was like, to, to suggest that that for me will be fulfilled through somebody else's children. They have their own mum who has their, you know, who, yeah, they, they have that already. That's so rude. Yeah. Or even, do you know, like, as soon as you get married... When well, yeah, okay. right. yeah, absolutely. I just think it's it's a really, really insensitive pressure, and 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 people don't talk about it often no, enough. No, I mean, I didn't, I didn't imagine that I would be single in at thirty six years old, but I am here, and I think now, genuinely, like I said before, like I I'm okay on my own, yeah. and I would love to meet the right person, and I would love to have a family, but. I think you have to be able to kind of be okay by yourself. Yeah. And it's taken a long time for that to come. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen in my future. And I do think the best time, if 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 you were to settle down, I don't mean you specifically, I mean in general. Yeah. If a person's to settle down, the best time to do is when you're like, you yeah. know yourself. Exactly. exactly. Because cause you change so, so much. So much. And so that's much. why relationships don't work. Because yeah. when, eight years ago, as you were saying, you were a different person. So whoever yeah. you were out, going out within... You aren't the same people now. Yeah. Like Sean and I are completely different people from when we first met. We barely speak now. <laughs> <laughs> we have nothing left to, to talk oh, about. Stop it! You guys have been able to grow together, and I think that's that's impressive in itself. Yeah, but that's that's what I mean. Like you have to like if 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 we weren't right for each other, we would you would have to split up yeah. because you're not the same person eight years later. We'll not be the same people in ten years time again. Yeah. Like since becoming a parent as well, I'm a completely different person altogether. I have zero crack of me. <laughs> Oh, well, that's not true. Like anyone who watches this knows that's not true. Do you know you're just like you you change and and you do feel like people are, you know, there's such a pressure on you to be like, right, what what have you achieved by this age and have you done yeah. the the things? Do it's you know really I mean? toxic, and I think to suggest or society sometimes gives the impression that at a certain age, women in their thirties are not you're not complete until you've had a family, 
or you're settled down and that's just not yeah not reality anymore and it's so wild because I always think about how we look like I saw a thing the other day online and it was like 44 year old Colin Farrell is like a silver fox yeah. with his like hair and he looked class and all and he's got look at him aging like a fine wine and then it was like some French princess or I don't know queen I don't know and she's like a this cool streak of silver hair and they were like oh she's letting herself go she yeah. should be dying that bit of silver hair and you're like these were printed in the same week both by the Daily Mail and you're all are you having a shit it's that's wild, wild. <laughs> Like that's how... one way of putting it. <laughs> you're right, and it's and I think that's we just have to gradually try and change that. And I think if I I'm quite private about my life now. I learned yeah. I learned that lesson. Right. That I don't really share an awful lot. About like about my relationships like, and no, stuff. Like that. No, 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 yeah. not anymore. Not anymore because I got such. Don't a let bad, the bastards get the following. I did before. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely did in the past. And it came back to bite me when it didn't work out. And it just makes things more painful because you feel like you have to explain yourself. Yeah, and people are, um, yeah. Whereas now, as I've got older, I definitely, I keep a lot more to myself. And I'm much happier that way, having that private balance. <clears throat> yeah. I think sometimes on the show, like we have, to, we have to create 20 hours of content a week. And we try and be as open with the listeners as possible. And that's why it works, because people feel like they know us. But there's a lot we don't talk about and yeah. a lot we don't share. Yeah. That we go through privately on our own, you know, the three of us off air. Um, and I think that has been a change for me when I felt like in order to be interesting or to be relatable, yeah. I had to share everything. And now, and that's something with people starting online, like younger younger girls in particular starting TikTok careers and all the way they feel like they have to share every single thing about their lives. Yeah. Sometimes I want to just be like, please just don't, if you don't keep something for yourself, keep something for yourself yeah. because I think that's so important and the older you get, that's something we all have to learn, I guess. But because then it becomes <clears throat> free reign and I've talked about this a few times on this podcast, a local website that likes to, it's oh, like, don't, yeah. I know, yeah. and I have I've mentioned it a few times and it's so funny because then when I mention it, I go back and look at it and someone goes, I'm only here because I heard about it on James' podcast. So and we just don't we don't give it our time. We I know. Just don't we don't. I know and I've even I've even just got them another subscriber right now. Stop. Probably someone's gonna no, go stop it. Don't but it's like I refuse. So, but that's what I mean, because those are the things I read it. and I'd be like, because there's there's lots of which places online that just uh, that just to suggest that if you work in media, that you're free reign, that mm-hmm. they can say whatever shit they want about you and yeah. that it's like, oh, but that's okay because you're sharing stuff. And it's like, no, but you can't, you also have to be a human. That's it. At the and same I time. I think it's, it is a by, an unfortunate byproduct of yeah. the job, but it doesn't give people an excuse. And it's mostly women, yeah. I'll be honest, which is disappointing. It's mostly women who troll like that. Yeah. And I think it's a sad reflection on them as individuals and where they're at, like that's them stuff. The fact my that most is their problem. My most fun troller that I it's not even a troller. This person comments under every single video I put online and it's my favourite thing in the whole world and along may it continue until the day we both die. And they Do you love them? Do you have this weird I have never gotten back person? to them, but I'm just like, there you are. Every Welcome. single No, but do you know what they say? Oh, and it's the exact same language every time. Oh, I mean like English, but like obviously like the way the way the words are spelt. Goes, Oh, hold on, you're the girl from the Lee Lads. Every post. Oh, and that's what they're and saying. I love it. And I'd be like, that's hilarious. That's so shit. <laughs> it is the most Your lead lads love like crappest <laughs> trolling. And they're they're But is that trolling to them? Because I don't think it's that's not bad. trolling, it's just like the most shit communication. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's not great. Just pointing out something you already know. It's so funny. Yeah. I'd be like, but what and I would love to go and investigate who like they just commented on other ones going, Oh, hold on, you're the girl that does the breakfast show. Like and just every single time the exact same sentence. And I'd be like, I don't know what you're trying to achieve. I mean, and that's a them thing. That's a them problem yeah. if they want to spend their energy in that way. Imagine um, I just had it right back one day going, yeah, yeah, that's me. And they were like, cool, just making sure. <laughs> never please do. <laughs> oh my gosh, please do that. That would be brilliant. And that was the end I of I think that. there's obviously, trolling's never nice regardless. Stuff like that, I don't mind. Yeah, it's um, just silly. But I think, I think we have an opportunity as females in that space to create, this is getting quite serious, but to get, um, to create a really, like a positive space where people can, yeah. can exist. And it's like a more, um, um, inspiring space rather than somewhere to just tear each other down and yeah. like I've said so many times if you don't want to follow me and you don't want to listen to the show no one's forcing you to and that's absolutely fine yeah. I would rather I would rather that because I just have no capacity or energy anymore to give to people who are going to be negative 
it just, I think it needs to be pleased to be a better too because, like, obviously we we all probably spend more time looking at stuff online than we do looking at people in real life. Absolutely. And it's therefore so it should be, how comes you, you can't say to someone's face, mm. hold on, you're the girl from the Lula. <laughs> Why can't you say it online? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you can't say those things to someone's face without being abusive. Yeah. But you can say things online and they're not considered. It's a very grey area, but it shouldn't be grey. Oh, no, it shouldn't. And I think my thing is, my message to most people, if they're going to say or think anything nasty, I have said and thought them about myself more Same. times than you have. Yeah. So join the queue. Because I'll be at the front saying the negative things about myself all the time. And I have tried to learn to get that yeah. voice out of my head. So it's not the prominent voice in my own mind. So out of Pete and Powell, who would you get rid of? <laughs> People ask me this all the time. Do they? Altman, maybe not quite How cheeky. phrased like that. <laughs> maybe like, who do you like best? Who's your favourite? And it varies from day to day. Oh, does it? <laughs> Who's your favourite today? No, I, well, Paolo wasn't there. Oh, okay. So I'll obviously Automatically. Go with but no, look, I'm very close to the two of them. They are very different, but they are like... They, they both I love them and they drive me mad in equal measure and they would say the same about me yeah um, I love them both we would do anything for each other but we're also brutally honest yeah and yeah, I yeah. think that's the kind of friendship we I just have gotten to do some like unbelievable things together yeah we're so lucky we're so lucky and we look back now and we're laugh. just paddle board here we that just... was that was not fun that was one of the, one of the days I wasn't enjoying Palo <laughs> okay he suggested that we <laughs> paddle board from Scotland to um, Northern Ireland oh so that was his suggestion that, oh yeah 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 because I'd been on a paddle board three times in my life mm-hmm. and then we did this it was for cash for kids our charity so obviously an amazing yeah. cause and the support we got was incredible yeah. but it was painful like I will never forget how long when, did it take Oh, like nine or ten hours. It was whenever we were, uh, the whales appeared. That was my favourite moment of the day when the whales appeared and Paolo was out in the sea and I was going out next and these two big massive whales just jumped up and then he was like, right, your turn. Why did somebody have to be in the sea? Because we were on a pa- we were on a paddleboard. But why can't you just be on the paddleboard? Well, no, we were on the board on the sea, but you're out like you're out on oh, your aye, own aye. in the middle of the open sea. So that was great. And then there was um, another moment where I was out on my own, and it was quite early stages, so I was kind of just getting used to it. And the water was really choppy, and there was this big massive tanker, just like sailing over the path of where we had to go. Surely that makes the water crazy. Exactly. Aye. And the boys in the boat were what I didn't know. We're like, we need to get her in. We need to get her in. This, the, the waves, the, the splash from this is going to be take wild. We need to take her out now. And I was shouting, is the boat going to gonna knock me over? And they're like, no, it's going to Sweden. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and in reality, they <laughs> were absolutely we wetting themselves. <laughs> we need to get her back in or else she's going to be knocked off the paddle. And it was fine in the end. But I mean, look, they're great stories to tell. Yeah. Experiences I never would have done things like that ever by choice in my own life no yeah so yeah and the same as going to the Euros going to France to follow the Northern Ireland team for a month of football not my bag no but incredible memories yeah I mean that's it like because you get to do such different things and they build your relationship which makes it then nicer on air yeah Yeah. and it it, I mean look we're very honest and real like it's not roses all the time like it isn't of course on a trip like that where you're spending three and a half weeks living traveling working together yeah oh yeah like there was one time McDonald's Palo like refused to sit with us he just went over and sat by himself on the other side of the outdoor seating area ate a salad on his own because he was so sick of us I know I know who orders a salad at McDonald's Palo Ross Need to get him in and grill him on that. That is, that feels like the most palo thing I've ever the heard. The most palo thing ever. Mm-hmm. Is he getting like a, he only has a chicken salad, isn't it? That's all they offer, is I that one chicken salad? he's veggie, so I don't even know what he is. Oh, he's just eating spinach. He's a and a bit of onion. He makes me laugh. That's hilarious. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just um, complex, but we do, so What is your remember when moment from pop culture history? So my remember when moment is, do you remember when... Rihanna umbrella came out yes. and everyone got their hair cut like Rihanna. The the, the, the bob, bob that, that was, went down? Yeah. So everyone, including me. Yeah. And um, I got my extensions out yesterday in a four-hour experience. So I have like, I feel like I have no hair as it is, but it was even shorter at the time. Also to make it worse, I had a fringe. Like a full fringe? <laughs> so I had a full fringe. <laughs> And the short like a wee helmet. Tote, like a wee helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Awful. And I thought I was so cool. And it was short to long. And we used to go to Thompson's and I had my Rihanna haircut and I was dancing to Umbrella and I thought it was so cool. Yeah. But my fringe, when I got too warm, would like cow's lick, curl okay. out the end. So what I used to do is I used to bring a face cloth in my handbag 
And oh, this is so embarrassing. And at like moments where I was getting too sweaty, I used to like turn around, get my face close on the dance floor, <laughs> on the dance floor, in the corner of the dance floor, like dab my friend with my face. You couldn't dab my friend <laughs> with my face cloth and put it back in my bag. So do you? Did you ever have a haircut like that? Oh my god, I had. Oh, right, I never got the Rihanna one. At the time, my hair was very blonde at the time and like dyed off its head. And oh. therefore, if I'd have got, like my hair was like nipping and falling apart. And like you was, I'd, 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 <laughs> did I'd, you use sun in? Sun in? Sun in? No, what's that? No, did you never use sun in to make you blonde? No, did I just you? used bleach. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> great. <laughs> Your hair looks in great just condition. Now, to be fair, you oh, fully recovered. This is new hair from what I had then. <laughs> it, it grew out, fell out, got more hair. Um, but I, my my mum did the Rihanna though. She had a full... And did she? But while she was peroxide blonde and hers <gasps> actually did look like a helmet. Like, a, it was like a blonde helmet. It was like, do you know when you have like those wee Lego men? And then you put like a, yes. click a helmet on their head. Mine was the same. That was her hair. Mine was the same. Awful. <laughs> it was probably still it. looks quite similar. Um, I think the worst haircut I had was the first time I got layers. Oh, do you remember layers? Did you get the Jennifer Aniston? I, I had the Jennifer Aniston for my confirmation. Oh, amazing. No, I looked like f- neck up, 45. <laughs> neck down, <laughs> nine. <laughs> I was wearing double denim, fringed. Of course. With, do you remember Groovy Chick? Yeah, I loved Groovy and Chick. And a Groovy Chick t-shirt. Bang on the door. Yes! Yes! Oh my, my God, favorite. Bang I on had the, the pencil case and the file of facts to match. I, I'm going on a million tangents here, buzzed off stationery. So Me too. Much. Buzzed off stationery. I would have loved to have worked in the post office. Thing. Me too. Fuck, I love it. I'm just it. devastated paper chases no more. I used oh to my God, just go in and buy gel pens. And buy gel pens. Yeah. And like all the little notebooks that I never used. Do you know what's so funny? Back then in class, we used to like swap gel pens. That's how we like, yes. that was our hobby. So you'd open we. up your pencil case and we'd all go, I'll have your pink for my gold and we'd swap gel pens. They're doing that now with vapes. <laughs> That's what they're doing in school now. Youth of today. I'll give you my Tropicana <laughs> coconut and if you give me your <laughs> We were so mint. innocent. I know. But I'm glad we were like that. We don't want to like age too prematurely. No, that's the thing. Because obviously we went through that phase. Did you ever see those photographs of like our age whenever we were teenagers? And it's like the blue eyeshadow. Hideous. No eyebrows. And the two little the strings. The tiny bits down yeah. here. And then you look at them now and they all look, look like, like Rihanna. Jenner. Yeah, you yeah like, they do. That's not fair. It's just not, because where do you go from there? Yeah. Where do you go when you look like that at 18? Yes. At least we take in your 30s, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. I, I've said this before, but I 100% pick mid 20s. Not if I did, man. I don't mind. <laughs> I'm coming I'm coming back for myself post baby here. Listen. <laughs> you can rock it. And um, yes, so my haircut, the first time I got layers, I went to my granny's hairdresser who worked out of her living room. Nice. And all she had done to this st- at this stage was. <laughs> was picked curlers in old women's hair and put them underneath one of those wee heaters to give them a wee set. A perm. Like a, a wee set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. set their hair yeah. each week. Yeah. And I was like, well, that sounds like the woman for my layers. Oh, no. <laughs> so I went to her house and I was like, can I get layers? And I must have been 12, 13. And she didn't know what layers were. Oh, dear. And I was like, well, and I explained them to her like, you know whenever you have like one length of hair and then there's like other lengths of hair and they're all like chopped in like your hair isn't all one length it's like different lengths she caught my hair blunt at the bottom she went up an inch caught it blunt again I went up an inch and caught it blunt again it looked like a wig it had three <laughs> blunt layers <laughs> what did you do? left the place and lived with it did you live with it? did you just tie it back? would you know when you're in a hairdresser's and you're all oh, that's, that's great so beautiful I can't believe how well this is <laughs> thank you so much I'm not going to get slagged in school I swear <laughs> oh my god I went to, I, I had that hair and obviously my mum had paid hairdressers and we just didn't have the money for me to like go get a fix yeah so did you, what did you do just tie it it half went up, it went down. back and and I and I think it just your hair grows unevenly anyway so it naturally oh, fixed itself no. like my mum might have got scissors did every now and then and just started chopping bits off it was a real learning curve you would have been well we would have been some pair like we, me with my yeah. Rihanna fringe job and then you with your I got a full Irish dancing perm done too when I was in second year yep oh I'd done all the stuff <laughs> I am um, I remember the summer I was like I timed my perm for like a couple of days before we went back to school so it'd be like a fresh perm that I could show everyone now bear in mind at this time people weren't getting perms that wasn't cool it wasn't in yeah I just thought hey I'll start a trend <laughs> <And> Derry <laughs> got a perm done 
We ain't done to school. Now, we also lived like 40 minutes drive away from school. My mum dropped me off, drove back home. No mobile phones at the stage, that's not a thing. And I went in and I was like all biz with my perm. I had this tartan hairband on as well. Nice. Wise up. How did I not kiss the boy by then? I don't know. I don't understand that. <laughs> I sound gorgeous. <laughs> and I went up to reception and was like, what class should I go to? Because like what classroom is my form room? And she was like, are you a first year? And I was like, no, second year, look at my perm. <laughs> <laughs> so grown up. And then she was like, you aren't back till next week. So I had to sit in this reception area. It was a real, it was a real anticlimax from ha- thought I was going in with the perm to like majorly influence. Yeah. And then I had to wait for an, for like an hour and a half for my mum to drive home, get a phone call and drive back okay. and get me. So by the time she came back, my hair was straight. Oh, <laughs> no, no. Did you influence the receptionist to get a perm? No, 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 no. I influenced her to leave and get a new job. Oh no, <laughs> no. that's so disappointing. <laughs> but I have had my fair share of shit hairstyles like my first ever modeling job I did this is my first and one of the only jobs I did was when I was like 16 and I did a hair show Mm -hmm. so I thought I was going to be Cindy Crawford yeah so I went to London with the hair people they put me in a corset and a tutu and a pair of suspenders which my mother was not happy about and they cut my hair I had like long hair and they cut it so that the top half was like a proper like a bowl shape which they then backcombed kind of to make it all like curly and stick out so like a bowl and then they left these two big long bits like a mullet almost and then they dyed it the bottom half of it red and the top half was black and I did this hair show thinking this is the start of my modeling career and I got on the plane on the way home and I took a look at myself in the airport when I'd taken all the like horrendous makeup off and I cried the whole way back to Belfast and then I had to live, I had to go into school with, with your my hair. Like that. Yeah, yeah, like a full on mullet. It was horrendous and they had to just chop the long bits off. So then I just <clears> had this, it looked like a mushroom. Yeah. Did you know the exact same thing happened to me? Did it? My very first modelling job. Huh? Only was a hair show? It was a hair show in Italy. Oh, wow. So You've I, got to at go this further, stage, was like, I 100% am going to be the new Cindy Crawford. Yeah. I'm going to Italy. You're going to Italy. That but was a big deal. Two other girls who I looked at and was like, oh my God, they're actual models, <laughs> went over to Italy and they did the same thing to me. My hair was oh. all sorts of shapes and sizes. Everything was everywhere. There was no there was no rhyme or reason. Yeah. It was like somebody just went, do you know what I'll do? Close my eyes and hold 10 pairs of scissors and see what happens. This will be trendy. Uh, yeah. I had like, patches of no. blue, of red, oh, of no. green, and then it was all cut up. And it was shaved up the back. Shaved up the back. It was crazy. No, that's the worst. And Never again. And then it's like, I was at uni at the time, so you come back and then you, you do have to live with it. For like a while, I thought I might be like, it's so crazy that someone's people ask me about it and I'd be like, I was just off in Italy with doing a model, big, big, big model job I got paid yeah. £150 for. Um, <laughs> I didn't even get paid for oh, did you not? <laughs> but the things you do at that age I know the things like, you do that's how badly I wanted to be in the fashion me. industry like yeah. this is going to make my career like first option model sign me up and that's where I went that's my first my first job see there you go you <laughs> actually did make it oh, my, no no <laughs> <laughs> And here we are. And here we are. No, didn't. No, that was a very short-lived career. <laughs> just kept booking hair shit. And I was like, I must have fantastic hair. Because I just keep getting, like, hair shows. They just keep cutting it and all. And do you know what I think? They've, I think their school of thought was, listen, she's not going to be around for long. Just, like, cut her hair all mad <laughs> shapes and sizes so and it doesn't matter. No one will care. <laughs> so mean. At least she got signed. That's well, the main thing. Yeah, with my shit hair. <laughs> Um, listen, thank you so much for coming Pleasure. and joining me today. Is there anything you want to plug while you're here? Anything that's upcoming? I know you've got your, obviously you're on Kill FM every yeah. morning. Yeah. Just you on 6 till 10? Just the radio show. 6 to 10, five days a week, Monday to Friday. Mm-hmm. Is this my camera? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you would like to Probably. tune in, we would We don't turn it. that one on. <laughs> Am I just looking at this and there's like, hello, there's actually nothing <laughs> yeah. behind it. But yeah, yeah, the radio show at the minute and then... And you, do you, you still work as a personal stylist? Too, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so I'm still I'm still styling, and yeah, so hopefully there'll be some shows coming up potentially in the summertime. But stay tuned to my Instagram for all yeah. that. That was the if worst you sell need, ever. If you need my head and my hair for that, I will use you. Would you like yeah. to just open the show? Just if we just shave this side, perfect, perfect. Could, no, put me on the poster. Shave my head. That's over it. Here. And, like the Dye little mullet at the back. Yeah, and in homage to the start of our modelling careers. Yeah. Like who's this middle-aged woman? 
<laughs> we're not middle-aged. Middle-aged we're not mother middle-aged. of nine. We're not. We're not. We're not. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for laugh. coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and thank you very much for listening and watching at home or wherever you are. I'm not I'm not telling you where to watch and listen to this. <laughs> be where you want to be. Yeah.